but that's another context. The, the professional development is yet another context, not only for the leadership group to shoot for, but then it builds you know, the expectations they have in those sessions when you go as a teacher, uh, set the context for them growing as individuals with whatever technology they, they uh, session they attend. And then before Matt goes over this, the idea of making mistakes in our district is, is okay, it's fine. As long as you're trying to find something new and use it, it you may not work out well at all. And but our, all of our teachers in our school know that it's okay if you try something and fail, you learn that that's not what you want to use. You try something new the next time. So that, that feeling that, that is given to our teachers that it's, you know, go ahead and try new things because you're going to have to sooner or later is what makes us, I think, a very good school because we fail all the time. You know, it's just part of our life. You find something, you try it, it doesn't work, you try something else. So that's sure. what we do. Um, all right, so we have this effort going on and in, in we're we have the parent night, which builds one sort of uh, um, effort, and then we have all the professional development sessions that really make use of the very tangible, I have this new technology, now what do I do with it? Um, you know, it answers those questions, but, it, but through those efforts, we can start having a deeper conversation about what it all means. You know, the technology, yeah, okay, you can start seeing how it might impact teaching and learning in the classroom, we're attending sessions, we're getting used to these devices like an iPad, for instance. But, what, but what are, what's the bigger picture? Uh, from a leadership standpoint, you can start having the conversation about 21st century learning, is the term that's most often used. You know, with the idea that, teacher, that students need different kinds of skills in the world um, in order to be productive. The whole idea of the four C's, you know, from the partnership, communication, collaboration, creativity, critical thinking, um, solving problems together as a group. Um, you know, the Common Core Standard really taught, spoke to all of this as well. The idea of depth and rigor. Um, and that technology, the idea was that technology is really essential and uniquely placed in order to get kids to that point. So we can start having the, the conversation with the staff that you're not going to get away from it. This is absolutely something you have to embrace. Um, you know, when, one aside too, one of the things uh, that a lot of districts are looking at is the whole idea about bring your own device. Kids are coming to schools and saying, can I bring my Kindle? And you know, what, what type of you know, reaction the teacher gets there really speak or gives to the student, and the reaction the teacher has really speaks to what the policy and comfort level is uh, with that district. Just this year, our district adopted this bring your own device uh, policy that allowed them actually to bring the, their own devices. Actually, for, at DMS, we've been breaking that policy for quite some time. <laughs> you just had to, right? What are we going to do? Stand around all day and collect cell phones? It just was, you know, you just couldn't do it. It was a technology right there. Uh, one of the earliest um, opening staff meetings, I, I, you know, one of the scenarios I laid out for the staff was if we suddenly had no textbooks, no paper, no pens or pencils, and the kids were standing in front of you, uh, with nothing, there's nothing in the room, um, how could you still conduct a very rich and powerful lesson? And of course, the answer was, well, students could just pull out their smartphones and you could do all kinds of stuff with it. So it starts laying the groundwork, all of this whole effort, for a bigger conversation about the purpose of education and the purpose of, of teaching and learning and what we're really getting the students ready for. And so all of this technology and the sessions they're taking, we can start piecing it um, or attaching that to that larger conversation about getting kids uniquely ready for a very different kind of world. The you can't not adapt to how students are using technology part is big for me because I teach technology education and my curriculum changes basically weekly. And trying to keep up with it is very scary for me and us because you don't know what to go out and buy. You don't know what to get to have the students help help the students do their best job. But we, you can't just sit there and put your head in a hole and hope that it's going to pass you over either because you, when you come out of that hole, you're going to be so far behind, you won't know what to do. I mean, I came from being an industrial arts teacher making birdhouses <laughs> to using my iPod to run a slideshow, which I never in my life envisioned before. Okay? So, Matt? Yeah, so this is all part of it as well. When you go along, is, is the uh, being good digital citizenship piece, you know, that we have to actually tangibly teach kids how to be good digital citizens. 
And these are some of the things that we touch on. Uh, I talked about um, you know, the need to do this. If, if, you haven't, if you don't have a policy that actually allows kids to use their smartphones as a part of teaching and learning in the classroom, then that's something that your district would want to look at for sure. You know, it's sort of like social networking. Um, I was in John Walsh's session uh, yesterday, um, you know, focusing on Twitter. Social networking is kind of like bring your own device. It's one of those things you can't really ignore. You can't not ad adapt to that, you know. It's just the way the kids are functioning. It's the way that they work. So why not embrace that? You really have to sort of get your arms around it as an educational institution. We've oh, oh, yeah, the whole buy smart thing. Sorry, Mike. No, it's quite right. This is something, you know, the, one of the technologies that teachers grabbed onto, if, you, if I listed them for you, um, you know, the, the Mimeo or, say, the document camera, which of those two do you think teachers gravitated toward and really adopted very quickly? Which do you think? Just throwing that out there. Mimeo or, like, the smart board technology or the document camera? Document, document camera. camera. Yeah, no. document camera. They grabbed it right away, right? It's like a really fancy, cool overhead projector. You know, and but you can do a lot with it. I mean, you could it shows live video, so you can do an experiment underneath the camera. And so it really was a great piece of technology to bring to teacher to teachers right away. Well, the thing is, that's a separate piece of equipment. You have to think about buying smart. The iPad, of course, has apps that allow it to act like a document camera. So you're basically buying smart because you're including many types of different technology into one. So you're saving money, really, you know, if you're thinking fiscally like that. Right. And since, we, and since all the teachers do have an iPad, they already have a document camera in case their document camera does break, which they are doing because they do, and that's what we're going to talk about next, the idea of what you're going to use, makes, what makes sense to your school. You can check around with other districts, of course, to see what they're doing. You don't have to reinvent the wheel. This, how do you keep up with it? And I don't have an answer. You do the best you can by letting yourselves and the students and everybody be proactive in finding things and bringing them to you. These are the questions that the, the tech committee would ask. They're big vision questions. They have to ask themselves of that, those questions. Right. Because, because I started having, I, I am in charge of all the AV in the school, which went from passing out two or three VCRs, a couple TVs a few years ago, to being in charge of 52 projectors, 52 document cameras, 52 Mimeos. Do you, do you see how it changed a little bit? And that everything's changing, and then when something breaks, trying to replace it, it's very expensive. So now that we know that we can have, we already have the iPads, there's no reason to buy new document cameras because they work wonderful as a, as a document camera for free with an app. So you already have it. So listen to your staff, attend conferences like this to try to find out how you can do better with what you have. But you gotta work, look, this was me when I had hair. <laughs> the stuff you can't forget. This stuff does not take care of itself. And you need somebody that's going to be able to make sure that the filters are clean on the projectors. Because that $600 piece of equipment doesn't work really good when the bulb blows out. And then the document camera is not gonna do you any good because you have nothing to show it with. <clears throat> so you need to be able to have somebody. And then even if you send out an email that says, it's Monday, it's a good day to clean your filter, or, you know, guess what today is? It's clean your filter day. You still don't have them do that. You because the teachers do that? Well, teachers clean their own. And I went and cleaned every single one in the school the week before Christmas this year and found out that teachers don't clean their own filters. <laughs> When the bulbs burn out, you need to have one on, on hand, but you can't keep them on hand too long because they have a shelf life. And it'll, it can go bad just sitting on your shelf. And the wonderful part about the bulbs on these projectors is they're timed. Most of them are timed for around 5,000 hours. And it's not going to work after that whether it was fine or not. It's just a timed out machine. It's built in obsolescence. They know we're going to buy a new bulb. Which is why you also send out an email every once in a while that says, please turn off your projector between classes. That is extra two, three, four hours a day that they're running. It's really not necessary. People bump into things. People pull things off of tables. Things fall down on the floor, go bang. They don't work near as well once they've bounced. You can try that yourself and see that for yourself. But you need to be able to have somebody that goes around and fixes it. I don't do it myself. Part of people from the tech committee can be any period they're in charge of. <coughs> helping somebody that needs help. 
Okay? Then we need to upgrade and you need to have people that can help you figure out what you want to buy. And it's really nice to know that other people can help you with that because making the decision yourself is very stressful. And then you need somebody to be able to help diagnose the problems and fix them along the way constantly. That's part of the game. Maintenance is always forgotten under those bids when you get all that cool stuff. Nobody's thinking five years down the line what it's going to be to fix them and replace them. So that has to be a big consideration after you do have the stuff and you have taught the students, teachers how to use it, and then the students get to use it and everything's going great, you need to maintain everything. So that's where we're going to end. Okay. Yeah, and just a couple more we things. Want to show you. We want to show you something our, one of our students created. Um, and it's, it's an app. And basically what it is, it's called IDMS. And it's an app that he created uh, that basically replaces the agenda. And it's wicked cool. It really, really is cool. And uh, what's interesting is that this app, basically, yeah, let me see if I can show you quickly. I, I left my dongle or the connector for these types of devices up in the rooms where it's doing us a lot of good. Mm -hmm. But um, you can get a sense of it. Basically, so you know, like student it's replaced the agenda book of mm -hmm. writing the homework into yeah. it. Like all the kids that have smartphones use this app? Yes. It's an iPhone app right now. So it's, you know. Is, it has a calendar. Yeah. Well, Pat, you can pass this around. Uh, no, thank you. I don't want to rate it. Okay. It has a calendar. It has a schedule. It has assignments. It has a hall pass. So the students use this for their hall pass. They bring it up. They can choose where they want to go. It's, there's a pull down list. They can choose how much time they're going to be gone. They, I say five minutes. Okay. Then they bring it to me. Sign it with my finger if I'm a teacher. You really right. sign off on it? Yes. Yeah. And they That's can make that out as, like, they can, We sign it and then submit it, and then it turns mm -hmm. green for the first few minutes. And then, oh, where do you want to go? Sorry, I didn't tell her. Yeah, and then it turns yellow and red the as, time, as okay. time clicks away. So basically what this it includes, again, a place for you to enter assignments as tasks, um, you know, that you can check off and complete. So this, is a, this speaks to what Mike was talking about before about involving the student body. Uh, what was interesting about this is that this technology really, just as here we had a bring your own device sort of policy, but this technology, once students were allowed to use it, and that went through student council and our site-based uh, team, so it went through that process. The student presented to the whole staff, which is really hard for him to do. He's an eighth grader, you know, but he did. It was a great experience for him. But it created, again, that context for kids and teachers to start using um, devices in a very regular, normal, this is our everyday kind of thing. You know, I still caught myself with kids, you know, on their phones like this. I'm like, hey, phone, what's up? You know, in the hallway. And of course, they said, oh, it's my hall pass. I'm like, oh, okay, right. Just check.